how many runs have we seen come in this area tonight? The straight boundaries are the short boundaries, and that is just helping yourself to the two slips. Friendly wide to try and protect that huge area. Back with a point. When they got him fishing in the test match, he didn't get away with it. Not only do you get away with it in short form cricket, you get runs in full value. Four runs for that feeble little push. Well outside off. Clint McKay's done nothing wrong. He's gone for four. Much good over that. Boundary in the wide, isn't it? None for 11. All next side trouble. Saywag. Not ideal. Not where you want to be anyway, especially when you've got no protection and it's a T20 international. Do you reckon that first ball's key? Well, we talked a lot about the last ball. That's now enormous pressure on Brent Lee. First ball's four. Now the batsman knows if he can get a couple of singles, maybe a two, or maybe even another boundary later in the over, it's going to be a big one. A lot of pressure now on Brett Lee to get the rest of this over right. There's a great perspective from our voter phone spider cam. Look at that right behind the keeper. See if there's any swing. away on the onside, settle for one, probably a bit short that delivery to the ball to swing. Put shutters into an old batsman though, <laughs> looking at a bloke at 150 comes steaming in. And so Wag, uh, not as good a runner between wickets as some of his teammates, so the Australian fielders will be aware of that and uh, they may even give him a bit more latitude than they would the others. panic at the moment. We've got already hit a boundary per over so far. That's all we need to do. Boundary per over. Just pick up singles up with the other deliveries. Current run rate 6.4 is right on the money at the moment. or anything that's not on, they're just waiting for the one to come and they're playing it well. They're striking at the rate that they require. That's a nerve-wracking start for Australia. It's a really good finish from Bentley. In the end, he just went for seven. It's done for 18. Two here. Uh, settle for one. 
was to say well, the crowd come back to that game and say, oh, they're in for a really good series now. This Indian side really seem to have picked up their play. Bear in mind, they're also the World Cup holders in one day cricket. Sri Lanka, who were the third side in the tri-series, were the losing finalist in that competition in the subcontinent last year. So we've got three quality one day sides playing in that competition. It promises to be a beauty now that it looks to me like India have lifted, India have lifted their game. trying to protect for the full-blooded cut shot. So he's gone a touch squarer down the top left of screen. And Sawak fools him with something fine. Now they're moving. They've got to keep bowling tight where they did there and then try to protect fine. Tucks away on the onside. That's where it's difficult to bowl to Sawak because if you want to bowl at him, so if you give him any width, he'll thrash you through point. As we saw with that last bout, he also has the sub to just drop the hands on it, run it down through third or fourth slip for a boundary as well. So then you bowl straight, and he works on the outside. That, that's a quality cricket shot, that. And then the, the next ball, not that much straighter, probably off stump. He jumps and flicks it the other side of the pitch. What's going on there? It looked like Sayback wasn't ready in it. He's at the ninth strike, is he? I reckon what he was saying is that David Hussey had moved from second slip to like a floating third and a half, and he didn't think that Gautam Gambier had seen it. So you watch here, he sees him go around. He doesn't think that the batsman's seen it, so he jumps in. Actually, he did right, James. That was well done. Because if he runs one straight to the fieldsman, particularly if it's in the air, he won't be too happy. History tells us, Heels, in this T20 game that one partnership will generally do it for you. You might as well make it the opening one. Yep, and they're about halfway. If they can get this to double what it is at the moment, 50, gee, that gives a lot of confidence to the batting lineup to come. Coley, Reiner, Sharma, Dhoni, Jadeja. Still plenty to do. Ravi Ashwin after that. They'll start to think, well, we can do the rest. So George Bailey needs a wicket. Tucked away, he's looking for two again here. Up to Brad Hogg, no way. Threw it across the turf. Up for 26. Gambier facing Doherty around the wicket, slip in place. Almost behind the wicket keeper, the slip. So the first variety about to see how it goes, Lance. Yes, Heels. It's going to be an interesting five overs because there are no wickets for the Aussies. They've got to break the back somehow, get a couple of quick ones, two or three, to slow things. Kohli, Raina, Sharma to come, the youngsters. But uh, at the moment, India in a pretty good position. You recall the run chase two nights ago. They ended up being 31 runs short, but they still had wickets in the back. So they can't make the same mistake in here tonight. They've got to keep up with the pace. Keep an eye out for the required run rate. It's just under seven runs in over an hour. Once it drifts to above 10, there's more pressure, obviously. But India travelling nicely at the moment. No wicket for 30. Oh, it's Zawag against the spin of Doherty. Out he comes. Whoa, that's gone high. Here's another oh, one. Flick to the leg side, finds the gap. At least 
tree, they're pushing for three. Gambia won't make it. The fielder slips. Three's possible. The play with India. So we're uh, just starting to launch a little bit. 22 from 13, exceptional player. And they're just out of the box play this incredible shot that intimidates the bowling, intimidates the fielding side. He'll give you a chance as well. We've seen that. You've got to take it. Surely less explosive from Gambia. Yes. But still very good. Turns a strike over to Sawak. Hog has a shot. Australians have touched rattled here. Well, I think those those wickets towards the end of their innings, Australia, it took them down to the sails a little bit. That's a great shot. Vodafax spider can just giving you an insight into how much footwork is required to get down to a spinner. <laughs> It is again. He's over in front of off stump. The LB's on. Oh, boy! Oh, and in as a Yorker. Good idea. Well done. Yeah, he's changed the tempo. All of a sudden, the run rate required is down under six and a half. And 104 metres. Is that the record tonight? I think it is. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So we saw that boundary is about the fence. A great grab, too. The deflection was taken beautifully. Batting in, it's 20 yeah. metres of pitch, and then there's 70 metres of outfield, and then there's 10 metres or 15 metres of seats. That one cleared. 13 of the over, none for 42. Right, well, he's got Sawag on strike, second ball. The worm, just an indication of what Sayway can do when he puts the pedal to the metal, all of a sudden it spikes big time above the required run rate. So he's the danger man, setting it up for the middle order. They're bound to lose a couple of wickets sooner rather than later, you would think. It's the nature of the game that uh, they've got themselves with a, a foundation. And I don't think Sayway's finished just yet. No, he's casually looking around the field and cementing where the Australian fielders are in his brain. Where's he going to go? What's Hog got? Is it the wrong and first up? It is. Oh. Well bowled. Well, that's the one. He gets a lot of wickets with the wrong and batsmen forever have not picked it. You've got to watch the hand closely. He comes out the back. That's how he gets that movement away from the right-hander. The batsmen, oh, I suppose they don't face Chinamen too often. The left arm leg is. They don't pick it up, they don't read it. He pitched it well too, wasn't it? Outside leg line that's hard to sweep. The top edge is very yeah. possible. A full toss! Get Sawag again! Can you believe it? Well, there's the new tactic to Sawag. Well, it boys! Don't make them bounce, he's struggling with them. To be honest though, Hawk was lucky because that was departing to the boundary again. But if you hit the air and you hit it flat, a chance of fieldsman might be in the way. It was a sharp take. And I love this match. Australia get that break through. They've been working hard for it. One for 43. So now, a huge ovation when the, the newest pin-up boy came to the crease, Virat Kohli. He's been very good. Test matches. His technique has stood the test of the Test series, and now Hawks trying to bamboozle him with speed. Yes, Bobby. Certainly a talent, immense talent. And I had a chat with him at the break, and he was very upbeat. I think that the whole team were buoyed by the way they fielded. They got the run outs, they were catching, but just the way this young team, young dirt team, was moving around, it was starting to gel. You sense. Brett Lee out there, a lot to do sideways. He had to cover 20 metres. That's allowed Coley to get to. Good way to get off the mark. It was uh, an excellent cut shot. So, it's like the machine, Coley. He's got a very good all-round game. We saw in the test matches, the defence, with the ability to put on the pace. He scored eight or nine one day in the national hundreds. That's where he really announced himself. 
and that's why he's become a pin-up boy in India. So T20 right up his alley. 87 from 79 balls remaining. Good equation for the Indians. Half chances. Oh! Wrong and well played. Half run outs now. A great catch. Slick stumping. Australians have got to be ready for it all. 1 for 46. Seven overs gone, 20 runs on the board, 46 for the Indians, and one down. The big wicket of Verinda Sawag, Xavier Doherty went for 13 of his last six balls. India needing 86 from 78. Doherty continues. Round the wicket. Oh, yeah. Coley sits back on a cut shot. I think David Hussey's ready for us out there. Hussey, you got us. Hussey, you got us, mate? You're probably a bit close to the crowd. Now I can hear you. All good. Righto, how are you feeling? Seven overs, 47 on the board. It's getting tight. Yeah, we're five wickets down from my prediction, so plan B. Yeah. Uh, Righto, what is it? You to bowl, maybe. Uh, I generally like to put down 11 or 12 and over when I come on the bowl. But i tell you what, I'm very happy Sawag's out. He tried to hit me for six sixes during the IPL and he got me for four. So I'm pretty happy. It's sixes. He was just starting to get going as well, Huss. Yeah, it was a pretty good catch by Marsh, actually. I reckon if he missed it, would have taken his head clean off. There's the new tactic, bowling fullies. He's struggling with it. <laughs> yeah, Nathan Lyon in the test match, yeah. Here, gents, uh, get the run rate up to about eight, eight mile from over, and then there's a little bit of fireworks at the end, I reckon. And, and wickets, us, is that crucial to you now? Yeah, it is. Oh, I think top balls actually contribute to the wickets falling, so we can get a couple of dots, which uh, generally brings a big shot, um, and then we can get a couple of wickets. Why that help, like, do But tell me about the hog Roman. There's not many batsmen pick it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very good googly. Um, I'll tell you how I watch it. Oh! Uh, a lot of people don't watch the ball out of the hand, so you either watch the, uh, the back of the hand, or if you can't watch that, uh, try and watch the seam. It generally turns the other way to his con conventional leg spinner, because his seam for his conventional leg spinner is uh, pretty much perfect. So that's uh, two ways to read, read his googly. We're just showing it on screen now. Coming up and over the back of the hand. Brad Hogg, it's a, a quick thing, you need to be very aware. Oh! And not many batsmen find it comfortably. That's Clint McKay accompanying that one. Keepy, oh, they've gone three. They've pushed hard at one. And that's a different ball game, isn't it? The Indians pushing the running between the wickets. You don't often see that in the test matches. This is the, the younger leagues, I suppose. Oh! A big thank you to Dave Hussey for uh, another chat. We'll get out there shortly again. But this is uh, excellent intensity between the wickets. Oh! Well, there's a classic too. That's a brilliant delivery. Speared in it off and somehow Virat Kohli has found a way to get a single. One for 54, 12 overs to go. It's a bloody phone spider cam, very busy. And getting in nice and close. It's uh, footage that you've never seen before. I mean, getting out so close and down to pitch level and then out it goes. Right out, Brad Hawk walks on approach. Good oh! Robin. Is it an edge or just buys whatever it is? It hurts. And it's four runs. They all count. Doesn't matter how you bring up the boundaries. Edges, French cuts, and then the more powerful orthodox shots. They all work. You just keep ticking over. See some interesting shots being played. That was an attempt just to push it a lot squarer than it went. It's the most popular boundary area for the day. No question. The edge. Past the wicketkeeper. Past slips. Beating third man. No one's really had any freedom to, to belt consistently down the ground or mid-wickets or over cover. It's all been tough and tight. Whether the wicket's holding up a little bit when the length is just 
just short of a length and the bowlers bang that in, don't seem to be able to hit through the line today. from Saywag or Coley, but this is what he does very well, just manipulating the gap. It's what he tried at ANZ, just didn't get enough on it. Half volleys are hittable. The length oh, of the oh, bowl mate. is important. The Indian spinners were so good at not giving the Australians any. And the other thing was Australia will fall down. They lose wickets, so they can't, they couldn't take many risks. There's such freedom now, one for 64, the Indians. Gambia knows if he goes on and makes 50, that's probably all he's got to make. Another 23, 25 runs. The team's in good shape. Oh. It's the tip and run aspect to 2020. You just find the gap. Dock it in close and away you go. You've got that instant response from your teammate. That's what went wrong with Dave Hussey, the couple of run outs. There was the response from the partner, but there's hesitation hey. as well. So Gambia now, and he'll be looking for another gap. They just want to keep it ticking over with that big shot. That's all that's required. A runner ball is what they need. And there's the run to finish the over. That's nine gone. India still on top. Australia needing wickets. One for 66. Oh! It's impressive to see the way that... Uh, Gambia has controlled himself at the crease. He's obviously resolved to bat this through and let the others play around him. Yeah, good sign for him, not just in this game, but for the rest of the summer. To see Gambia get some runs. He's a good player. We haven't seen the best of him so far this summer. A bit like Sabag. But uh, all of a sudden we're seeing the sort of player he can be. Coley we've seen some good stuff from. 100 in Adelaide played really well there. They are, they're certainly in control of the game and Australia need wickets. They need probably three or four of them very quickly. Yeah, Gambia is appreciated that uh, you don't have to go wham bang when you're chasing 130. You can actually get yourself in. There have been 20 scoring strokes, 16 of them singles in his innings, but he's allowed the scoreboard to tick over, he's allowed the strike to rotate, and at the moment at least you feel. Australia where he wants it. James Pattinson is with us. They need to find a spark, a bit of magic. Yeah, they definitely do here. Uh, one for 73 and doing it easy, the Indians. I think David Hussey is our man. Two for four the other night. I'm yeah. sure the Australians would love another two for four if they were Hussey tonight. That's a Gambia strength. Little chips off the spinners and he come down and smack him out of the park too. But he's very good at getting inside out. And just working the ball into spaces. Loves using his feet to spin. Very orthodox player, actually. Got a Gabby. He's, he's running the trouble in Australia with the extra bounce and seems to have worried him the most. This situation is right up his alley because he doesn't overplay his hand. He works the ball around nicely. And as Mark Lippens just said, he chips the ball away. It's just been the bounce. Round of Elf Stump is worried. 